I am Jose Cordeiro, and I am here at this fantastic BGI 2024 conference talking about artificial intelligence and also longevity. Um, I am board director of the Millennium Project, and also I am vice chairman of Humanity Plus, that used to be the World Transhumanist Association. I have always been fascinated by technology. I am an engineer from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he had an incredible professor, Marvin Minsky, who was one of the three founders of the field of artificial intelligence in 1953. Well, he founded that. I was not born, born at that time, but when I went to MIT, I got very interested into artificial intelligence, space, travel, and also longevity. And uh, recently, I have been devoting most of my, my time to longevity because also we are closer and closer to curing aging and also because I am aging. And I don't like to age, it's not good. And we are very close. I like to say we are between the last mortal generation and the first immortal generation. Within two decades, we are going to cure aging. <laughs> Uh, it is possible that we will bring back many people. Uh, in fact, not just Marvin Minsky, who was a genius, and he wrote so much, he spoke so much. Many of his lectures uh, have been recorded at MIT, and his books are fantastic. Uh, but not only him, Ray Kurzweil, who is also another friend, professor, and mentor from MIT as well, he says that he wants to bring back his own father. And he kept all the information about his father. And soon, he believes, in two decades also, we will be able to bring Ray Kurzweil's father back. And um, I am doing the same even with my mother. I'm keeping everything about her. She's still alive, but um, you know, she's 92. So she will not make it to rejuvenation technologies. I do believe in the next two decades, we will have rejuvenation technologies. But uh, she might not make it until that time. So I'm keeping everything about her, for her, with her, so that we can be able to bring her back. Probably, uh, well, we don't know how we will reconstruct her. But uh, she will have many of the, her experiences, her feelings, her knowledge, um, everything that we know about her today. It would be nicer to bring younger versions of ourselves. And this is what I am working on biological rejuvenation. I think, like my friend Ray Kurzweil, that by the year 2045, we will be able to rejuvenate people, complete bodies. Uh, in fact, we know today that we can rejuvenate cells and organs, and soon we will be able to rejuvenate organisms. The Nobel Prize um, in medicine in 2012 was given to a Japanese scientist called Shinja Yamanaka that I went to visit in uh, Kyoto University, where he's a professor. And he got the Nobel Prize in 2012 because he discovered four genes that control aging and that you can modify these genes to become young again. So this is uh, known scientifically that we can rejuvenate cells and even organs. And many scientists are working on the reju rejuvenation of whole organisms. <laughs> Yes, uh, the genome sequence project uh, for humans began in 1990 and it finished in 2003. And it cost $3 billion and 13 years to sequence the first human genome. Today, we can do it in a few days for a couple of hundred dollars. But in five years, it will be basically free. It will be maybe $10 in one hour. So we have so much uh, power now about biology, how to read biology, and how to write biology. Because first we learn to read, and then we learn to write. And so we can modify the genome, as I mentioned, we can modify these aging genes to be young again. So this is a fantastic possibility, and we are very close. According to 
records, well, there will be two incredible dates in the future. The first one is to reach longevity escape velocity uh, between 2029 and 2030, which is very close. It's only six years away. So if we make it to 2030, we will gain one year per year we survive. That will make us live long enough to live forever, even if still aging, until 2045, when we will have rejuvenation technologies for everybody. So those are the two dates, 2029 to 2030, longevity escape velocity, and 2045, rejuvenation and immortality. To live indefinitely young, not to live indefinitely old, because no one likes to be old. And we know we can reverse aging, and that will happen in 2045. So I want to watch this video in 2045, uh, when we will be younger, and remember today when we were old today. Um, well, AGI is fundamental because it is a totally disruptive and transformative technology that can be used for anything. You can use it for cooking, for learning, uh, for space travel, and for biology. Um, like sequencing the human genome can be done faster and also can be analyzed much faster uh, with artificial intelligence. But many other applications are coming up, like how proteins fold, which was one of the most complicated things in biology. And um, Google's DeepMind solved that problem two years ago. With an uh, alpha fold, they were able to figure out how each protein could fold and create. And this could have taken centuries for humans, but artificial intelligence is helping us to solve all of the biology problems and the medical problems. So it is fundamental for reverse aging as well. And this is moving very fast, so I'm very happy about all the incredible advances in artificial intelligence, which will be beneficial for humanity. Well, first, don't die, which is what Brian Johnson says, don't die. Or also Ray Kurzweil, because he thinks that if we make it to 2030, we will reach longevity escape velocity. Uh, Ray Kurzweil talks about three bridges to immortality, three bridges. The first bridge was in the 2010s. Basically, do what your mother told you. Eat well, sleep well, do some exercise, meditate, don't drink too much, etc., etc. That was bridge one that led us leap into bridge two in the 2020s. Bridge two uh, consists of the first biotechnology therapies. Uh, things like uh, metformin, rapamycin, senolytics are new technologies based on biology that will allow us to live into the 2030s when we reach bridge three, which is nanotechnology, much smaller than biotechnology because now, um, biotechnology is in the, uh, at the molecular level, at the cell level. But nanotechnology is at the atomic level. So we are going to have nanobots, nanorobots, circulating in our bodies, in our blood, cleaning the uh, cholesterol in the veins, cleaning the plague in the brain, so we will stop many diseases. And also we will be able to connect to the cloud. This will be in the 2040s. With artificial intelligence, we will become immortal, or at least we will be able to rejuvenate ourselves. Immortality is something that we will never reach because for that we, live to, we need to live until the end of times. We don't know when that will be, if that is in 5 billion years or 10 billion years, or what we will be able to change also so that the universe doesn't end, doesn't stop. But the point is that uh, we will stop aging and we will reverse aging. So we will have the option to live indefinitely young. And this is the goal. And we know it is achievable. Immortality, biological immortality, already exists in nature. There are cells which are biologically immortal, like germ cells for reproduction, and cancer cells, uh, which are bad, 
but they discover how to stop aging. Cancer cells do not age. And that is fascinating that cancer discovered how to stop aging. So if cancer discovered how to stop aging without going to MIT, we will, we will, because uh, we are learning what cancer did to stop aging. Also, we'll know, we know today that there are small organisms that are also biologically immortal. The immortal jellyfish, hydras, these small animals, they are also biologically immortal, which means that they do not age. Not that they will be immortal forever, because if a rock falls on, on an immortal jellyfish, the immortal jellyfish will probably die, but it doesn't age, which is the important concept. Stop aging, reverse aging, that is the goal. We know we are very close. Uh, yes, actually I think we are going to be immortal not once but twice because we will be computationally immortal, meaning that our software will become immortal and also we will be biologically immortal, meaning that our hardware our hard work will also be immortal. And the dates for both of those immortalities are 2045, according to Ray Kurzweil. He talks that we will reach basically the technological singularity and our minds will be uploaded into different substrates. So we can be in the internet, in the cloud, anywhere. And we can have uh, bionic bodies if we want, different bodies. And also our biology will be controlled. We will reverse aging. So we will be, again, twice immortal, biologically and computationally immortal. Once again, uh, artificial intelligence is truly disruptive and it will be everywhere. It's like um, electricity that is everywhere. So the same with artificial intelligence, but it will help us to be much more productive, uh, faster, uh, to have a better um, communication capabilities. So I, I think it is very positive. I, something good will have good results. I don't see bad outcomes about artificial intelligence, including us becoming more intelligent because we have a limited intelligence. So if we can become more intelligent, we should become more intelligent. Like I like to be with intelligent people. I like to have intelligent children. I like to be in a more intelligent world. So I am not afraid of artificial intelligence because I want to be more intelligent. And I think most people would love to be more intelligent. What I am afraid of is human stupidity. And we humans, we are born stupid, and some people actually remain stupid all their lives. So if they can become more intelligent, if all of us can become more intelligent, humanity will go to the next level. We will raise up from this basic human condition into something much better in the future. I think we are becoming more tolerant, uh, more ethical, and more compassion, compassionate throughout history. Let me give you an example. 5,000 years ago, we ate our enemies. Cannibalism, and even some of our friends, cannibals, cannibalism was practiced in many cultures 5,000 years ago. Now we don't have cannibals, but we had slaves. Even in Greece, where democracy was invented, a third of the population were slaves. And it was okay even for the slaves to be slaves. And slavery lasted until the 20th century in some countries. Also, a century ago, women did not vote. And it was normal even for women not to vote. And there were no uh, um, uh, gay rights, uh, environmental rights, uh, and so many other rights that we have now, including uh, we have less wars. A uh, hundred years ago, we had horrible world wars and millions of people died. So we are actually in a very peaceful time, in a more tolerant time, and we are more compassionate and more ethical. And I think this will continue. And also artificial intelligence will be more ethical than many humans. Uh, and that is 
why some humans are afraid because we are afraid of the unknown always. However, artificial intelligence will be more ethical than most of humanity and will help us to improve the human condition. Uh, well, I was born in South America in a developing region and um, artificial intelligence will help to solve many of the problems that we have in uh, undeveloped nations or underdeveloped nations. Uh, in fact, technology is jumping ahead like many places in Africa, for example, didn't have telephone land lines, but now they have cell phones. Uh, the same with electricity. I think in about a decade, we will have also wireless electricity transmission. So we don't need these cables. Uh, to carry electricity in the future because we will have wireless electricity just like we have wireless uh, cell phones. So this will help us to, to connect the world and artificial intelligence is making all these connections much better also in terms of mobility. Uh, we humans, we kill about a million people driving every year, a million people driving because we are bad drivers and we are uh, talking on the phone, uh, drinking, or uh, putting some makeup, whatever. So we are bad drivers. Artificial intelligence will be fantastic drivers. And also, they will communicate with all other transportation. Especially now, we are moving from two dimensions into three-dimension transportation. We are going to have drones. We have to, to have something like personal airplanes. And this requires a lot of uh, coordination that we humans cannot do, but artificial intelligence will do it uh, for us, with us. So we will be advancing into a better world thanks to artificial intelligence. We will kill less people. And um, um, I am so excited. I think it, it, the future is really bright. <laughs> Uh, this is a very important point because until now, economics was based on the use of limited resources. But now, we are moving from this scarcity of the past into abundance. We have many more uh, possibilities. We can use different types of uh, materials, resources, combine them in different ways. So we are producing more and more with less and less. And this trend continues. Until about two centuries ago, the human condition was poverty. For all the planet, average income per capita was $1,000 per person per year. Nothing, $1,000. Today, there are countries that have an income per capita of over $100,000 per person per year. And this is happening all over the planet. Incomes are increasing, even though we are many more people. But why? Because we are using resources better and better, and we produce more and more with less and less. This trend will continue, and we are creating a world of abundance for everybody, even though we are many more people. Uh, Malthus, 230 years ago, he said that it was basically the end of the world because he thought we were too many people and we didn't have enough food and enough resources. But something changed, which was technology. The Industrial Revolution began. And the Industrial Revolution was able to produce many things with less resources. And we are going through another Industrial Revolution powered by artificial intelligence. So even though we are more people, we can do many more things, cheaper, better, faster. And this exponential trend continues. So we are truly moving into a world of abundance and we are moving into other worlds. We are going to have a colony in the moon and then on Mars. I'm pretty convinced that in one decade, two decades at maximum, we will have a Mars colony. This will change everything. When we have the first humans walking on Mars, looking to our tiny planet here, we will see the universe in a different eyes, with different eyes. We will have a different perspective of humanity, life, the universe, everything. So this is really exciting times. This is the best time to be alive and to remain alive.
Well, I love science fiction. Uh, I grew up reading uh, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, Isaac Asimov, Sir Arthur C. Clarke. Actually, the last two I visited. Um, Isaac Asimov in Boston when I was a student at MIT. He was a professor at Boston University or Boston College, no, Boston University, and Sir Arthur C. Clarke. I went all the way to Sri Lanka, Colombo, Sri Lanka, where he lived because I wanted to meet him. Um, and they were geniuses because science fiction of yesterday is the science reality of today. And the same, the, the science fiction of today is the science reality of tomorrow. So it inspires us, uh, gives us different ideas like cell phones, internet, um, teleportation that will be coming, uh, immortality that will be coming soon. So all of these ideas that were really crazy, we are becoming, re um, yeah, and making reality out of those. So uh, science fiction is very good to open up our minds. And um, I think it was Einstein that said that the mind works like a parachute. It needs to be open to work well. So yes, we need to open up our minds to the incredible possibilities. I'm so excited that we are going to be finally colonizing the solar system. This is incredible, incredible. And that we are going to be super intelligent, super longevity, and super happy. In fact, those are the three main pillars of transhumanism. Super longevity, super intelligence, and super happiness. I consider myself a transhumanist, which means that I believe in this philosophy of humanism, traditional humanism from the Enlightenment period, with science and technology. Science and technology is what has made humanity advanced. And if we use science and technology, we will transcend our limitations physical limitations, mental limitations, linguistic limitations. In fact, uh, in 10 years, I think we will communicate telepathically. You know, I will be thinking in my native Spanish and you will be understanding me in English or in Chinese or in Russian. Uh, language will not be a barrier in the future. <laughs>well, I think that the world is getting all connected, thanks to the advances in telecommunications and real-time um, everything, real-time everything. So uh, it is bringing, actually, the developing world uh, into the same level. Um, first, China was growing at 9%, 10% per year. Now India is catching up, and now some African countries. So I'm very, very optimistic. Uh, there are some exceptions because of horrible governments. That is why I prefer robot presidents. But even in those cases of horrible governments, because of globalization, they are not sustainable. The human condition keeps improving, and the people in oppressed regimes uh, eventually will revolt because they will see other countries living better. Uh, the living example today is North Korea and South Korea. I have actually been to North Korea. It's one of the poorest countries in the world. Average income is $10 per person per month. That is really nothing, $10 per person per, per month. Anyway, uh, South Korea is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and it has the best internet in Asia. While North Korea is the last country in the world still without public internet. The last country in the world without public internet. But not only that, life expectancy is over 10 years more in South Korea than in North Korea. And it is the same Koreans, but some Koreans stayed in the past without internet, uh, with uh, a lot of poverty uh, and short lifespans. While in South Korea, people are living longer. They are also taller. South Koreans, I don't recall exactly, but they are like three inches taller South Koreans than North Koreans, so they are taller, they live longer, uh, they are much wealthier, and it happened in, after the country was divided. So I want the future to be more like South Korea and less like North Korea, and we have to make that decision. And I believe, because I was in North Korea, that even North Koreans, if they, were, if they had access to all this information, they could begin asking for things to change. 
The problem is do they don't have access to this information yet, but they will in the future because this is unstoppable. The truth eventually comes out and they will see that their brothers and sisters in the South live longer and are taller and, and are much, much wealthier. <laughs>
while we have to be open so that artificial intelligence learns from the, the good things and the bad things we humans do. And we do many bad things. In fact, to me, it is not justifiable that we have hunger and poverty in this planet. This planet has abundant resources for everybody. So as I mentioned, my problem is not artificial intelligence. My problem is human stupidity. This is what is bad. We humans are uh, very stupid and, and we do bad things also for other people, even for ourselves, you know. In terms of longevity, many people don't take care of themselves at all. And they uh, don't do exercise, they don't meditate, uh, they don't sleep well, which is bridge one to immortality. As all mothers know, they sleep well, eat well, do exercise, don't drink too much, don't smoke, etc., etc., etc. We are careless even about our own bodies. And we are our bodies. Also food, you know. Uh, you know, fried food is really bad, for example. So, and we, but it's tasty mm -hmm. sometimes. So people forget about that. Or sugar, sugar is really like venom. Sugar is really bad for the body, but it's very tasty. So I understand, and we are humans. We, we make mistakes and we, we fall into these pitfalls. So yeah, part of the problem is human. So um, artificial intelligence, maybe it doesn't have a sweet tooth. So it doesn't have to eat candy, for example, or it will not have to smoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I don't know. It, this is learning on the road. We are building this together with artificial intelligence, and we are learning continuously. So this is something that, uh, yeah, we have more understanding when we are building this. We didn't have this understanding even five years ago. We didn't have large language models like we, like we do now. And so we are learning about uh, good things and bad things. We have to increase the um, database, big data information. For example, right now it is mostly Western oriented and white colored. So some artificial intelligence don't understand much about um, Africa, for example, because they are not the source of information. So uh, they, they do many mistakes that should be corrected. Um, and uh, for example, sometimes they think that uh, darker people are bad people. Or even I remember Microsoft, when they had some other products, uh, they had Indian, uh, equating with savage, that an Indian was a savage among the synonyms. When you have in Microsoft Word, you put Indian, and the alternative uh, synonyms was like savage. And that is wrong. Anyway, so we are learning about all these mistakes. So we are learning on the road. <laughs>well, this is a very good point, but I think artificial intelligence will be decentralized. So being decentralized, there, there will be not a single owner. It's like internet. Who owns internet? I don't know, and I don't care, because we have access to internet. Uh, however, there is censorship. I was uh, in Russia last year and in China also, and um, yeah, many websites are censored. So governments do have control, even though they don't really own it. The same with uh, cryptocurrencies. Some governments are putting restriction to cryptocurrencies. Um, but once people are more familiar with these technologies, they will also want their rights, their rights to be uh, maintained. So they will complain so that these are free and decentralized technologies. So anyway, I think that the world is getting incredibly better, faster. Uh, we are going to see more technological advances in the next two decades than in the last two millennia. This is incredible. In the next 20 years, more technological advances than in the last 2,000 years. This is the best time to be alive and to remain alive. As I mentioned, we are between the last mortal generation and the first immortal generation. So this is the time to be alive. This is the time to see when humans transcend our limitations.